Hi, I'm Richard Brown, president of Acme Trailer. You know, every week we get hundreds and hundreds of phone calls from potential customers and customers alike. So we decided to take a minute and shoot an instructional video answering the most frequently asked questions of our potential customers and existing customers. We figured this would be the fastest and easiest way to provide you the information that we get hundreds and hundreds of calls a week for. So here you go. It's very important that you start with a two inch ball. Ideally you want to be around 14 inches from the ground to the ball right here. It's very important when you're hooking up your tow dolly to your two inch ball that you look to this small window at the top of the coupler. This confirms to you visually that your coupler and your ball are fully seated together. Then close down your locking mechanism, put in your locking pin, and then go to your emergency breakaway cable. The emergency breakaway cable is designed to fully activate your disc brakes in the event that the coupler were to come off the ball for any reason. Very unlikely, but certainly possible. It's a very simple hookup. Just put it through the hitch, connect it back to itself. Then hook up your safety chains. And your four flat wire. We use your tow dolly comes to you uh, fully pre-wired with a four flat wire for lights only. A brake controller inside your vehicle is not necessary. This is a completely self-contained, self-actuating brake system. If you look right here, you'll see a roller pin with a one-inch slot right here. This is basically how much braking capacity you have. When you apply your brakes, the weight of what you're towing presses forward and energizes your brake line. It's self-actuating, it's very responsive, it's very sensitive, and it's very powerful. There's no delayed brake, there's no chucking, there's no hard hit. It's all very seamless and very powerful. This is your uh, actuator reservoir ca cap. It covers a small rubber cap that actually feeds into your actuator. Uh, as your brake pads wear down, you have to occasionally top up your brake fluid with DOT3 or DOT4 brake fluid. Be sure to keep an eye on that. When you put it, this cap back in, make sure it's properly seated. This reservoir only holds about one ounce of fluid. It won't hold much. Make sure this is properly seated, and when you put this one back on, make sure it's properly seated or you will lose it in short order. We do have these available. If you lose one, we'll send you one. But if you just take a minute and make sure it's properly seated, you won't ever have to replace it. Uh, Brandon and Justin are going to show you how to hop the dolly into place. It's extremely important that the tow dolly is aligned with the vehicle. Your tow vehicle and your tow dolly both should be straight before you attempt to load. Go ahead, guys. It's very lightweight. It's very easy to do. Much easier for two people than it is for one, but one person can do it if they're in reasonably good health. It's very important to make sure that the tow dolly and the truck you're towing with, or the RV, are straight and level to begin with. You should always uh, load on asphalt, cement, or firm earth. Soft earth or gravel could present a problem. It's very important when you're lining your car up with the tow dolly that you're not only centered on the tow dolly, but you're straight with the tow dolly in the vehicle in front of you. You have to be careful not to load the tow dolly at an angle. Both the tires on this vehicle should come up and draw it tight to the front lip of the tow dolly. Very important to start out with your vehicle being straight. All right, it's very important when you're lining up your vehicle that the nose of your car, the center of your car, as closely as it can, aligns with this decal on the tow dolly. That way you know your vehicle is dead center. A person spotting on the front can assist the driver with that. It's very important before you start to load the car that you take a moment and look at your ramps and make sure they are centered now to the tires on your vehicle. The nose of the car is exactly lined up with the decal on the tow dolly. The car is straight and ready to drive up onto the ramps and then transition onto the tow dolly. 
It's very important when you drive up the ramps that you drive up nice and steady. You don't want to get on the ramps and then give it a bunch of gas. Try to drive up nice and steady and get to the flat part right here before you transition onto the tow dock. Okay, at this point you're ready to strap your car down, but it's very important to make sure that both tires are in full contact with this front rail. If your car was straight before you started loading, then both tires should be touching right here, right now. You want to start by removing this retaining bolt. This retaining bolt is intended to keep your winch in there in the event that uh, you forget to take it out for unloaded transport. Every wheel strap is set is marked with a right and a left. Right indicates passenger side, left indicates driver side. You want to start by connecting your vertical straps with the hooks to the back of the tow dolly on the widest tie loops. The ideal position is to have the back strap at 10 o'clock and the front strap at about 2 o'clock. What you're trying to do is you want to avoid, you want to avoid the strut tower housing behind the tire and the wheel. Splitting these two straps at 10 and 2 does that very nicely. Feed your excess strap through your ring and make sure that this rough abrasion point is not cutting on your strap. Feed your strap through your winch. At this point, before you tighten up your winch, it's very important that you make absolutely certain that this strap is going into the winch straight. If it looks like that, this will be an abrasion point. If it looks like this, this will be an abrasion point. It's very important that your winch and your strap are vertical and that there's no abrasion point on either side of the strap. Go ahead. You want to use an adjustable wrench that is not provided to tighten up your strap as tight as you can get it. You cannot over tighten these straps. It's extremely important that they're very, very tight. And then you want to strap up your excess because if this excess strap gets into under the tow dolly tire or wheel, it will be a real problem. And you can tie up this excess any way you choose to. There's no right way or wrong way as long as it doesn't come loose and get involved with the tow dolly wheel. Now, the passenger side of the tow dolly is fully restrained and ready for transport. This roundabout uh, will quickly and easily demonstrate for you the effectiveness of how well the tow dolly turns, tracks, and follows around in a circle, around in a turn. It's very seamless, it's very effortless. If you notice, if you can see it in the GoPros, the steering wheel is doing the turning, not the wheels of the vehicle. Okay, now we're demonstrating a hard 90 degree turn with a loaded tow dolly. 90 degrees to the right with a loaded tow dolly. And here we are gonna hard brake. All right, now we're going to uh, take a hard 90 degree turn to the left, a full 90 degrees to the left. And again, if you notice, the wheels on the dolly stay straight and the steering wheel does the turning. All right, now we've lined up the ramps. We're ready to back the car off. Before you take your wheel straps or your restraint system off, make sure your emergency brake is on so your car does not roll off the tow dolly without ramps under it. When you're ready to back off the dolly, you want to back off slow and steady. Don't stop, just back off.
So there you have a complete demonstration of the Acme Trailer Easy Tow Tow Dolly, the only disc brake tow dolly in the world. We appreciate you taking a few minutes to visit with us and learn a little bit about our product. We here at Acme Trailer believe that safe trailers save lives. Happy and safe motoring.